Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today's is a good one. We are going to talk about something I truly love to do. It has to do with fishing rivers and fishing current. You know, I cut my teeth growing up fishing the Wisconsin River, the Mississippi River, and countless small streams located throughout the upper Midwest where you couldn't get a boat. You either walked them from the bank, you waded them, or you took a kayak or a canoe. But by doing that, I have learned so much about how fish set up in river situations by utilizing current to their advantage. Uh, it's one of those things that if you understand how, you know, how the fish set up and how they feed, you can apply that to natural lakes as well based on other current like wind driven current or natural current if you have a lake that does have rivers and streams coming into it. But I've got here five baits that are absolute must have river baits. And the reason for this is they excel in current conditions and there's very specific circumstances when I like to use these. I'm going to talk about them more geared towards smallmouth, but these baits work across the country for spotted bass and largemouth as well. The only real differences that I'll make if I'm fishing rivers based on species has to do more with bait color choices as well as water color. Not all rivers are the same. You do have some very clear rivers that run throughout the country. You also have rivers that are pure mud that run throughout the country. Uh, up here in the upper Midwest, the rivers are generally either going to be you know, muddy or they're going to have more of a tannic stain to them. And that's what I'm gearing these colors towards, but know that the bait choices are universal across the country, regardless of species of bass. You just might need to alter color a little bit. And before I share with you these five baits that are absolute must-have river baits, I do want to remind you if you want to support the channel, guys, please use the Tackle Warehouse affiliate link to purchase your tackle. The link is in the description for the video. Don't forget to bookmark it for future purchases as well. It's a great way to show your support for the channel. Also, if you're looking for a little bit of extra content from me, check out the membership. Uh, I've got a bunch of different videos that are coming out. We do a monthly live stream as well where you can ask questions directly to me. It's a really good way to get a little additional content from me if that's what you're looking for. All right, so these baits excel across the country regardless of river type uh, for several specific reasons. So let's just dive right into my first bait choice. My first and potentially my favorite is a dirty jig swim jig with a three and a half inch Berkley the Deal as my trailer. This works extremely well in current because you're talking about a moving bait, a moving bait that will come through the water column. You're continuously moving it, and it doesn't get affected in terms of the current. Like if your current, if the current's taking your bait down, you can still work the bait appropriately. But the biggest key with a swim jig, and this is why I like a swim jig over, say, a spinner bait or a chatter bait, which kind of fall in the same category, is because of its weedlessness. Most rivers throughout the country are going to have some form of wood debris in the water, whether it's sunken and stuck on the bottom or it's just trees and bushes hanging over the, the shorelines. The key here is a swim jig is an extremely weedless bait so that when you're when the current pulls that bait under a log jam, you can work that bait back out without getting stuck. You could not do that with a spinner bait or a chatter bait. Uh, it's just, it gives you that minnow presentation, which is what a lot of those fish and rivers are feeding in without having the headaches of continuously getting stuck. The chartreuse and white, like the spot killer color, is my go to anytime I'm talking about dirtier water, regardless of species. Spotted bass love it, hence the name spot killer. Smallmouth love it, largemouth love it, but if you've got a river where the fish are feeding on some form of bait fish, this is a really tough bait to beat, but it makes you an extremely efficient angler because you can cover a lot of water without getting stuck, and they will hit this thing with a vengeance. So this is probably my absolute go-to. This is probably what I start with the majority of the time out, but it's a killer bait. So again, when you're talking about rivers, most of the time, if you're talking about a river that's not a very clear fishery, you're going to be fishing in six foot of water or less. That just seems like that's how it is. The fish don't tend to go too deep unless you're talking about true wintering periods. So the majority of the time, regardless of season, you're talking about fishing shallow water. So these baits are going to be geared towards shallow water because most of the time the fish are probably in three feet of water or less. And one of the baits that works extremely well 
is something like this Berkeley Square Bill 5.5. I love this bait, Fishing Rivers, because it's very buoyant. And I like a buoyant crankbait when I'm talking about river fishing because I want it to float up in the current. In some instances, if you have a crankbait that's not very buoyant, it's not going to float up because the current will actually keep the bait down. And if I'm fishing someplace where I've got, say, a rock flat or some sort of like rapids type area, I want a crankbait that when I get wedged in the rocks, it still will float up to the surface, which makes it less snaggy. And again, that's what a lot of this is geared towards. When you're talking about current, the current is going to put your bait in positions you don't necessarily want it, and you're going to get stuck a lot. So you want baits that are not going to get snagged. And that's where a square bill, like this Berkeley square bill, comes into play. You, you know, for me, a square bill is important because it's the less snaggiest, the, the, the most snag-free resistant crankbait made. So you want a buoyant one. And personally, I prefer smaller sizes. I don't like to go with a really large crankbait when I'm fishing shallow river type scenarios. Because again, if I were to throw a really big square bill, it's gonna get it's gonna get played a lot more by the current. And I don't necessarily want that. I want a bait that cuts the current and still runs true like this guy. It's a very, very good bait for covering water if you've got riprap sections, if you've got, like I said, a rapid type section, if you've got some riffles, um, anything where you're just casting around catching fish, maybe you've got some rocks in the water and you're fishing the eddies behind it, it's hard to beat a Berkeley Square Bowl 5.5, one of my absolute favorites. Can't go wrong with that. So next up, like I mentioned, you generally have a bunch of wood debris in the water, whether that's laydowns that have gotten stuck in the middle of the channel, or if that's bank type cover where you've got undercut uh, undercut banks, or you've got root systems, or you've got laydown trees or bushes that are coming down the water. I always want to have a bait that I can slow down with, a, a pitching style bait. A Texas rig is a really good option, but I find that I get better quality bites throwing a small compact jig. This is my probably my absolute favorite go-to river bait. Uh, this is the Dirty Jigs Luke Clausen Compact Pitching Jig. I like it specifically for this because it's got the uh, perpendicular line tie, which makes it less snaggy in wood conditions. Uh, it comes through it much better, but I like to pair that up with a small three inch Berkeley Pit Boss, which is quickly becoming my favorite jig trailer. And this small jig combo in like something like this Alabama Craw, a little green pumpkin, little orange is a killer river bait, but you got to have something to slow down because when the fish are not really aggressive, they'll really pull up in those log jams uh, to the point where you can't get them to come out for say that swim jig or something along those lines. You have to go in after them and that's where a jig is a really important player. So it's a it's a bait that I may not throw a ton of times throughout the day, but I'm putting it in very specific places based on where there may be inactive fish that I can't get a normal bait to. So you want to have something that you can slow down and get into those positions. Again, the compact size isn't necessarily just for smallmouth or spotted bass. It, it really has nothing to do with the species that I'm after. I like the smaller size jig because it's less affected by the current. If I throw a big bulky jig with a big skirt, the current's gonna move it a lot faster. Instead, I like to go with like a half ounce size. I trim the skirt down, a small trailer. I want something that's gonna fall faster and get into those eddies without being manipulated by the current. Uh, this small compact jig will catch plenty of big bass regardless of species. The hook is beautiful on it, it's super stout. It's really my go-to jig the majority of the time. I don't normally throw full-size jigs anymore. Uh, but you've got to have something to get into those places where the fish are really tucked up tight into cover. And that's where that jig comes in handy. So next up, because of the fact that you're generally fishing really shallow water, a lot of times the fish in rivers are in three feet of water or less. That makes a topwater bait an excellent choice because that means... You've got, you know, three feet of water is only that much, right? So that fish knows that bait's there. And it I find that river fish have to commit a lot faster. So if they see something above them, they either 
don't hit it or they explode on it to the point you get some of the most explosive bites. And that's not just topwaters, that's all baits. They really do commit and hit stuff hard because they gotta come at it. They really gotta commit because that current's gonna take that bait away from them if they don't commit. So if they commit, they're really, really aggressive. And that's where a topwater bait is excellent. This is a hard discontinued color to get for the Rebel Popar, but this is one of my favorite river baits. I find that it, it still really pops very well in the currented conditions. One key with fishing topwaters, though, I will say, I actually like to fish these downstream more. And what I mean by that is I'm throwing, I, I generally throw at a uh, perpendicular cast to the current, but I'll let the current take my bait to the cover that I want to take it to. So if I've got, say, a big rock in the water, I might throw 10 feet in front of the rock and let the current take my bait to the rock. And I'm doing that for a couple of reasons. One, I can control my bait better. I can get it to where I want and I don't have to make a real specific cast. But more importantly, a lot of times the most active fish will be sitting on the, on the seam upstream of say that big rock. So I wanna make sure that I'm up far enough to present it properly to the fish. If I were to throw it right to that rock, sometimes you throw it past the fish and therefore you're not gonna get them to bite. The other reason I like to do it is because I can work it down to the point where I can bring that bait into the eddy created by the rock, which will actually suck my bait back up to the eddy of the rock. So there's a lot of control issues that I like to uh, utilize when fishing a topwater bait. So generally speaking, I'm not throwing up into the current, I'm throwing perpendicular to the current and actually working more downstream of where I'm at. Uh, but a topwater bait is absolutely critical anytime you're, th you're fishing small rivers you will get some of the most exciting blow-ups you can imagine. In my opinion, a popper is a really good bait just because of the fact that I'm generally going to be fishing specific spots. So it's going to be an eddy, it's going to be a current seam, it's going to be a piece of uh, a wood in the water or a big boulder, something along those lines. So I'm not generally looking to have a bait where I'm covering big uh, distances of water. Yes, there's times I like to throw like a Berkeley Chapo, and, and work that through like a shallow flat. But generally speaking, I'm throwing my topwaters in areas where I've got a specific target. And that's when I really think a popper shines well in those conditions. So you cannot overlook having a popper with you. Uh, and the Rebel Pop R is a great one. The Berkeley Bullet Pop's a great one. Uh, Yellow Magic's a great one. There's a whole bunch of good poppers on the market, but you need to have one in your tackle box. The last thing that I like to have is for fishing some of those sandbars or current seams or uh, just drops that are in the river channel. Because when you have fish that are inactive, a lot of times they're gonna be sitting in some of those little deeper holes in that four to six foot of water, right behind a shallow riffle, right behind a sandbar, that type of thing. You also have a lot of fish that are utilizing those when they're really active and they're sitting right on the lip. And when that happens, that's when I like to go with like a Carolina rig with a zoom speed craw the Ultra Vibe, especially if I'm talking about spotted bass and smallmouth, they absolutely love this thing. This is one of my favorite river colors, just green pumpkin, orange claws, really, really good bait, uh, tough to beat. It's just one of those baits that really drifts well when you're fishing a Carolina, <coughs> Carolina rig. So when you throw up on top of that sandbar, drag the Carolina rig back over, and this guy will just go floating over the side. And it's a really, really good technique. This is one of those baits that uh, a ton of guys, like say on the Mississippi River, are absolutely crushing them on. Uh, and it's just, it's just a really good bait on a Carolina rig in river conditions. It seems to flow really good. It looks super natural, like a crayfish skittering across the ground. But you want to have something like that for fishing some of those little deeper holes and some of those drops that you get from current. Uh, but those guys are the baits I always have rigged up. Honestly, I don't throw that many other river baits because uh, these these five baits will cover everything for me. Yes, there's times I might mix in one in here and there, but you got to have these five baits on. So I hope this was helpful for some of you that maybe are intimidated by fishing rivers and current. It's really not that hard. Just let the fish position themselves based on the current and then get baits like these that will work well in that current through those types of areas where the fish are at. 
So guys, if you've got baits that you like to use in small streams or big rivers, throw it up in the comment section so that others can learn from you as well. Otherwise, hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned, another video coming out tomorrow.